Welcome, welcome, welcome to the SubHub Podcast. I'm MK Sullivan. And I'm Danny Moreno. And this episode is brought to you by Never Second. Never Second is a system of fueling products formulated specifically for endurance athletes, which provides a blueprint for success by allowing the athletes to test, optimize, and perfect their fueling and hydration. They take the guesswork out of performance fueling. Use code SUBHUB25 at checkout for 25% off of your order. And with that, today we have Judith Wider. She is professional runner sponsored by Hoka and Red Bull. She currently holds the second place position overall in the Golden Trail World Series with 588 points. Yes, that's a lot of points. <laughs> Thanks to her victories at Dolomite Sky Race and Mammoth Trail Fest. She also secured a second place finish at Pikes Peak Ascent earlier before Mammoth Trail Fest. And then even before that earlier this year, she was second place at the Trail Short Race at the World Championships. With her exceptional balance of climbing and descending speed, she will be a key athlete to watch in the upcoming final. And if you haven't already, make sure to check out episode 26, uh, released on July 27th, where we did a longer version episode with her, where we dove into more of her background, uh, balancing being a mom, et cetera. So welcome, Judith. Thanks for having me. Uh, hello, all together. How are you feeling uh, coming off of the U.S. double and the big trip in America? Yeah, um, I'm looking back to a really fun and nice two weeks, actually, or almost three weeks. But um, yeah, it has been beautiful, fast, and really um, lots going on the last few weeks, but it has been nice to be back as well. Yeah, and is it true that this was your first time in America racing and stuff? Yeah, actually, yes, Danny. It's the first time I've been to U.S. Um, I mean, I've been traveling a lot. But actually never been to US because they've never had competitions over there. Um, my travels, they were always like combined with traveling for competitions. So yeah, US was not on the list until two weeks ago. So I'm curious then, outside of the racing, what was the best part of the trip for you? What was your favorite part of mostly California and Colorado? <laughs> Yeah, so actually traveling for competitions, it's always a bit special. Um, I would love to go back and just do my own travel, um, um, hopefully with the family as well, to see more. Because, I mean, we came over to Manitou Springs um, just a week before the race. Um, we actually stayed there for one week. We could go for some short runs, run a little bit on the track. But my, we didn't see much, actually. Um, I was a bit sick the week before um, the race as well. So I really had to take care about my recovery as well. So, yeah, this week was kind of like special um, and kind of boring in some ways, but also really interesting to just go there and see these huge mountains. Um, traveling with the Golden Trail Bird Series was really special for me. I've done that on the final in 2019, actually, uh, a long time ago. <laughs> but um, to Nepal back then, together with my husband, this time I was by my own. So um, it was kind of traveling with a family as well, not small kids, so nobody to take care about, but still like lots of people to go to talk and walk and run together. And that was lots of fun. Um, the Yosemite National Park was just amazing. We did two runs there before the second race, before the Mammoth Trail race. I mean, it's not a lot if you want to see such a big national park, actually. But at least we saw something. And uh, I mean, it's immense. These mountains are just so big. It's just crazy. And you can't compare it with Switzerland, actually. Uh, even though it's mountains, they're just so different. And it's it was really nice, actually. Yeah, Yosemite is definitely, you know, a special place, I think, in the entire world, because, yeah, I haven't found something quite like it. And, you know, Switzerland is breathtaking when we go over there, and it's just so cool to, to have these different places. I think that's, you know, super funny and interesting to kind of touch upon, because I think most people you know, see a professional athlete's life. And a lot of it is you get to travel around the world and, you know, stuff like that, which is really cool and a huge part of it. 
Um, but at the same time, like we're there for a job and you have to, you know, you can't do maybe all of the tourist things that you want to do, but the trade-off is you get to connect with people around the world who do the same thing. So I think that's, that's really beautiful that you were able to experience that here in the U S um, just because I'm slightly biased, don't worry what your answer is, but which race did you enjoy more? <laughs> So it's okay case, if it's pikes. <laughs> in case of tracks and the uh, mountain views, I, I actually have to say pikes. But in case of like competing with other girls, it was nicer to compete um, on mammoths. So it's kind of like totally, yeah. I mean, mammoths was just special because of this. We were three of us were almost together the whole uphill, and we had a huge fight actually until the finish line. And on pikes, I was just like so dead, not feeling good after the finish as well. So kind of like, yeah, it has its own story, every uh, both of these races. But probably the track it was more like more beautiful on Pikes Peak. Yeah, Pikes is one of those races. <laughs> <I know. laughs> there are actually is... a lot of, I, I, there are actually lots of mountains I would like to go and see in Mammoth Lake because I think they're way more beautiful trails around the city which we couldn't see because of the track which has to be like accessible and nice runnable for all athletes so it's kind of like I would love to be back there and and run a bit more in the other hills and mountains yeah no I, I would agree with that too of everything we have to offer you know I understand that Mammoth Mountain is in the it, it's still beautiful right but it, and we're so spoiled but not I even totally, close, though. it's not even close though because yeah we have you know beautiful beautiful trails that I think everyone would love but yeah in the U.S. we just have like those permits and accessibility and wi-fi for live streams <laughs> <laughs> issue um as it's far as really to balance that and it is yeah itself. yeah so I mean they did a great job and I was really happy to be able to race there. Yeah. Going kind of, um, going in sick, I guess you were recovering from Pike's Peak. Um, we know that you and Sophia kind of just to dive a little bit more into that one were together kind of until the very end. And I'm curious if that was more of a conscious move that you knew that she wasn't racing next weekend. And so you had another opportunity to get some points potentially, or if it was, it was just such a hard move that you're like, I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm just curious what that move felt like. So actually uh, running Pikes Peak, I felt really good until tree line. Um, I felt actually really strong and I was like, not feeling tired by that time, but then suddenly I hit the wall. I was really horrible. I I know if I will go back, I will prepare better. I haven't been running um, up on 2006, 700, maybe even less than that um, for a long time. So yeah, running up to 4,000, that was just way too much. And Sophia mm -hmm. was just way stronger in the end. I couldn't follow her. And she actually, she was way, way faster than me on the last 2K or 3 miles. Yeah two and a half, three miles, probably. Um, so we, I, I tried to be like be with her to finish sprint shoe, but yeah, I mean, she was just better. So of course I knew the, there will be one race, but actually with Sophia, you never know if she will anyway decide to race or uh, the next race. So we didn't know if she really is gonna do it or not until after the race, I think. So. I just try to do my best on every, uh, like I do always try to do my best on every race. And that's what I did on, on the, yeah, Mammoth, Mammoth Lake as well. And as, actually it was a motivation to beat you and Florea as well to get these points, of course, because you're not running the Golden this year, but still like the points are gone. So yeah, it was a huge motivation to win another race to have still be in a chance for a good position in the end. Yeah, I think it's pretty much impossible to get above tree line and not die a little bit, like looking at people's Strava data over, you know, so many races. It's just like managing um, the death. 
but uh, still an amazing race, um, especially for the fact that you haven't been training up above 4,000 meters very much because that is brutal. It is brutal, yes. And it was mostly actually brutal to stay up there for another one hour because being tired, cold, it was zero minus degrees. Uh, for me, that was like really, really tough. Yeah, you like start to get sick stand standing yeah. up there for a while. Like you may get to the end of the race and you're like, wow, I did it and I ate all my food. And then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, we need to get off of this mountain now. <laughs> Why, exactly. why did, did they hold you guys up there for after yeah. the race? There's yeah, buses. Yeah, because um, we have to do the controls up there. And um, drug testing and stuff. Yeah. Gosh, that yeah. was the hard part. That's brutal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but it, it, it is inside of a building, but it's still like you're freezing yeah. and you're sweaty and yeah. And you're at 14,000 feet. Yeah. So <laughs> that's rough. Um, so a incredible race and yeah huge respect there you know Sophia was just better on the day um and like you said you know hopefully next year if that is included in the golden trail we'll see again maybe you'll do a little bit more altitude training um prior to that so then you come into Mammoth Trail Fest and you kind of know who's in the race and the goal is to win um so how did you feel kind of like at the the beginning of that race where you're like oh this this is good. Or was it a surprise? <laughs> <laughs> so actually, um, yeah, standing at the start line, Mahmoud, I felt um, really bad. Um, or at least r- starting to run uh, on this flat asphalt uh, road. I was like really struggling to to even hold a decent pace actually in the beginning or even see still see your back um at the beginning of the race um yeah I knew that I would need some like minutes to get into a race so I really tried to be calm and to like enjoy the downhill the first like 100 meters which were quite in the beginning of the race yeah but it was a struggle all out all this through the race um it was a mental fight but I'm actually quite good at mental fights so uh, yeah I made it, um, but my legs showed it to me the days after that it was a hard fight because I had like really hard uh, quads already at the start. And um, yeah, walking the next three, four days was not so fun. (laughs) Yeah, that downhill was like just long enough and runnable enough that you guys were hurting, I'm sure, for quite a few days afterwards at least I was I was surprised not many were talking about hurting legs afterwards (laughs) in the in the golden trail circus but I was just like struggling going to toilet actually for a few days oh yeah Um, well you definitely threw down because I was trying so hard to catch you and I would see you go look over your shoulder and, and I think you would catch glimpses of me and you would surge again and I'd be like dang it and so I kept like trying to push and I was pushing as hard as I could and it just the the brain game of it where you could see the person in front of you but it felt like there was no like I was never closing the gap but I think we were both just pushing so hard um and I don't know about you but I completely underestimated that downhill and how bad I was gonna feel like I knew I was gonna feel bad but once we got to the last four miles I thought I was gonna be able to run so much faster and we got there MK like warned me of it for like a month before or two weeks whenever I decided she's like that last part's gonna hurt and I kept telling myself just be prepared just prepared so I'm curious if that felt the same for you once we got to that last like 5k it was hard, the last 5Ks. Yeah, for sure. Actually, for me, the middle part was even worse. Yeah. Um, because I, like, I was in this part, like, knowing that I should push more or it should fit me more, but I couldn't get even closer to Florea. So I was still, like, 10, 15 seconds behind her, but I couldn't, like, close this gap in the end. So yeah, it was actually the middle part I suffered the most. And um, yeah, I actually started to eat again on the flat part, <laughs> like really in the last few minutes in the race because I started to feel so tired. So that helped because in the middle part, I really missed out of all food and drinks I had with me. 
Um, so yeah, I was a bit lazy with that and um, it was good. I had this flat miles left to eat and drink a bit more to get this energy back to the finish. But yeah, I was suffering as well. Yeah, that last uh, 5K, mm -hmm. I ran the 50K the next day and I, I remember passing my husband on in that little section and I was like, this is the worst because you've been <laughs> running for so long, like downhill. And then all of a sudden it's flat, basically. Yeah. And you're like, oh my gosh, I thought this was a downhill finish. <laughs> yeah, I was actually thinking about uh, like this track was, I mean, it's fun to have a, such a race actually on the circus and to try, for me, it was really to have something new on my trail running schedule as well. But I mean, if I have to be honest, I wasn't really enjoying the course except for the beautiful ridge with the stones up to um, Mount Mam uh, Mamut. So yeah. it was really a few minutes I was enjoying it and the rest, <laughs> I was just suffering. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I feel that California especially is it's known for like those very fast, buttery sort of things. And then this one's interesting with the the kitty litter and stuff like that. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to note one more thing about this race is like that's so much of your experience showing because I feel that sometimes when personally I get to the last couple miles of the race, I'm like, you're almost there anyways, just like keep pushing, even if I'm bonking and I almost get too stubborn about it where I'm like, just keep, it's, it's too long to just sip on some food. Uh, whereas you sipped on, you know, some energy and, and water and you put on like another 10 seconds on me in those last, you know, like mile and a half or 2k. Um, so that's just like a great reminder for everyone that these races, even though they're short and fast, like eat your food, you need to eat your food and hydrate. Um, because it will help you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, especially when you're in the altitude. I mean, I was yeah. suffering a lot already on Pikes Peak. I didn't eat a lot and drink a lot at all. Um, but also Mammut, I had lots of difficulties to eat and drink the thing, the amount I'm normally drinking or eating. So yeah, coming back to that, it's really, really important for me to like take this with me um for the future as well to to really be conscious about that in the beginning and maybe even pre-race do more to to not suffer in the end and then as you say the race is finished at the finish line and I mean if you're cramping the kilometer the last kilometer you will lose more than one minute so rather drink and eat something and then you will have this energy but yeah. it's a reminder to myself as well no, it's, it's always so hard to eat in that last mile, but so important. Yeah. Um, so you're going into the final ranked second currently, and I'm curious what your strategy is going into the weekend. Cause you and Sophia have obviously been battling it out kind of all season so far, and it's a short race. I mean, you have the prologue and then you have the 26 K distance as well. How are you feeling about both of those races and tell us a little bit, bit about your strategy, if you care to share. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be really interesting. I think I've never run a prologue against these girls or with these girls. I've never done something like that since back in 2019, we didn't have anything like that. So already running a race like 8 K I think there's quite a lot of asphalt downhill on this track as well, will definitely be a challenge um, because the break to the final final, like the real race, will not be too long. So if you have like pain in your legs from that race, 26 kilometers will feel really hard. So yeah, but I know that I need to give it all to be able to, to have a chance against Sofia. So, I mean, probably... I will like, yeah, just do my best and think of my feeling and not of, about the others. And then we will see. I mean, on the on the real race on Saturday, I mean, these four loops, it will be a challenge, like lots of up and down. I haven't been training a lot of that. So, I mean, we'll see how the legs will manage to go up and down so many times um, with flat parts in between going to be really interesting and especially also for Sophia I think she has not been training that too much as well so it's going to be really fun to see who is uh, yeah dealing with that the best yeah but 
I have to add, there is not only Sophia, because um, there are lots of other girls who are strong. So I think, especially in the prologue, there will be, or I hope for other girls to show up and to show that they are strong as well on shorter distances. Yeah, I think so too. And even though Mammoth, you know, was tough and mentally and, and physically, I, I potentially see that as like a really good race to have done before the final because it's also fast and quick and like forced, you know, those kind of muscles and, and neurological patterns to fire. So going into the final, maybe the the start and the prologue aren't as so much of a shock um, having just come off of that. Um, but yeah, as far as, um, so it sounds like, you know, a little bit of recon about the course with the asphalt. And we've kind of looked at some photos as far as the course itself with four loops, which <laughs> my brain didn't even put together. It was four loops. I just saw a labyrinth. <laughs> I didn't I realize think, it was like that. I think I'm right, but I'm not yeah. really, um, yeah. It might uh, be three or four, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we were curious if you had an idea about shoe choice considering that landscape. So I have actually not checked how technical it will be. I hope it will be a bit technical um, with lots of stones and things like that. So, but for me, probably it comes back to the like the same shoe as I've used for every race except for Dolomites this year uh, with the Texan 2X. Um, but yeah, if it's technical and it's um, really stony, it might be seen out too as well. But um, yeah, I'm. Um, it would need a lot of asphalt and gravel roads to rethink like carbon shoes or things like that for me, because I'm not used to that. And um, I'm rather sticking to things I, I feel comfortable with and I will be able to to like do these uh, downhills as good as possible. Yeah, I think that makes yeah. sense. I think it's good to go and see the track before the race if you have the possibility or at least parts of it. So, Yeah. Well, we're excited to see how you do in the final and thanks for joining us again. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me and I'm excited too to see how, how this will all go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> us too. Uh, well, thank you, Judith. This has been the Subhub Podcast brought to you by Free Trail. Just a reminder for you guys that this episode is brought to you by Never Second. Check out the show notes for a link to their website, their Instagram page, and use code SUBHUB25 at checkout to get 25% off of your purchase.